So in the same batch of locks at the S and G's, I got two different locks from our friends at Yale. Different kind of serial number, but you can see Yale in the back. And we come around here. Make sure I'm still in frame. Yes, indeed. Here's the key. You'll notice that if I take one of the SMG keys, it does fit. It will turn the lock, but it doesn't operate it. So, but to myself, well, here's the original key, the correct key opening the lock to myself. Well, if I can do this trick with the SMG, cover up the window so I don't cheat. If I can do this trick with the SMG, why then I should be able to do it with the Yale, right? So, Kiwi is just a little bit different, a little bit fatter, which makes the tool a little harder to grab that lever. But it's much harder without the window. pretty well. If you get it caught up, levers do not want to drop until you do a full reset, so amen to that. Slightly harder, but hip nonetheless. Let's see if I can bring it back. It should be easier because there's no anti-pick on the rear side of the levers. So 
So all I have to do is get in there and I have to say this one's a little bit tougher to do. So here is the Yale block and the key close up for you. That's actually harder to see on that background now that the light is in. Here's the lock. We'll bust it out just to show you Yale. There's the serial number. It's kind of hard to see. It matches the key. I have no idea whether it it's an indirect bidding code or if it's just an inventory type of thing. I suspect it's inventory. Um, the body of this lock, in contrast to the SNG, which is a cast, I don't know, it looks like a zinc alloy or something, the body of this is, a, is stamped sheet metal and, and is made of steel. At least the sides are. The bolt is not and the, the top is not, but the back is stamped steel. Kind of neat. So hopefully this will lift off without self-destructing. Too badly. Oh boy, that's fun. And no, it doesn't. Because the um apparent, whoa, apparently the thing wants well, I don't know what it wants, but the lever pack engages on the top there, so. So I got a little bit out of frame. So this is the lever pack, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the back one, that's the front one. Interesting thing I was noticing when I took it apart, so the levers sit on a pin that lives right there and it slides back and forth on it. So this is the rear lever with that funny little protrusion on it that grabs all but the first lever, I believe, in this lock. You can see that it has no interaction with the bolt at all. I mean, it'll go up and stop, but there's no gate on it. It's just wide open. In contrast to the normal lever, or one of the other levers, which definitely has a, a gate, so if the bolt is in the extended position, this has to be it would sit about like that. It has to be lifted to the appropriate height so that the bolt can slide in. No idea why they designed the lock this way. Interesting that two different manufacturers did the exact same thing. So it must have been the spec. The post office or whoever the customer was, whomever the customer was, must have requested this feature, if you will, this insecurity to be designed in, or maybe it's a like a master keying type of thing, but um, yeah, no steel. I thought it was very cool. It was fun to, fun to work out, fun to make a tool for, and um, if you see them on eBay, pretty cheap, so grab yourself one and have fun, or um, PM me and I'd be happy to trade you for something, trade you one of these for something else. This is Alex. Thanks for watching, have fun, and please keep it legal. Cheers.